Welcome to We Are Hospitality, a podcast from the Rhode Island Hospitality Association with your host, me, Bill Bartholomew. Okay, so we're here with Jessica Willie and talking Block Island, you know, and, and even before we started taping, we were talking about what a challenging year it was last year specifically. You're the executive director of the Block Island Tourism Council. Can you tell our listeners about your organization and its mission and how that sort of evolved over the last year or so. Sure, absolutely. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, I am the executive director of the Block Island Tourism Council. I'm an office of one person. I have a, um, a volunteer board of seven members from the community that uh, sort of help with decision making. And uh, we, we market uh, Block Island. Um, we market and promote Block Island. That's uh, you know set up by state statute to, to do that. Um, a lot of what we've been doing recently is more of uh, information sharing as far as getting the word out about, you know, what kind of restrictions and regulations and rules and things like that um, you need to follow um, when coming to Block Island. Um, but that's basically our our general mission is really to to promote um, to attract the type of visitor spending that uh, will result in sustainable and significant uh, economic and, and you know, the quality of life benefits for for all of Block Island, whether you're a visitor or uh, a resident here. Um, and that that sustainable piece is a really uh, sort of a big deal for us. Um, but that's that's basically what we do. Um, we'd go out, we market Block Island, we talk to people like you and talk to people all over and tell them what Block Island's all about and uh, try to get the word out. A truly magical place in the world, there's no doubt about it. Um, but I guess, how has the last year's um, event, so to speak, what, what, let me rephrase that. What has the economic impact been on the tourism, tourism industry on Block Island, frankly? Sure. Well, Block Island is, of course, um, we're extremely seasonal, but we are also driven, our, you know, our largest economic driver is um, tourism. It, it really does touch every aspect of life on Block Island. So, so six months of the year, we're, a, you know, tourist haven, and six months of the year, there's about 900 to a thousand of us that live out here and um you know you you can go all the way around the island and not see another person um but six months of the year it's up to you know 20 20 000 people or whatever it is so um tourism is is part of everyday life here um it allows us to have great restaurants and great stores and you know it allows us, those of us who live here to have more access to um, opportunities for getting off the island, think, you know, um, things like that. So, so I, the economic impact is, is large on tourism. Um, and we were real concerned last year with all the restrictions and regulations. And we, you know, we had to, the ferries, um, they didn't stop totally because they're a lifeline service, but um, they went down to one boat a day uh, just to sort of get essential you know, medicine, mail, things like that over to Block Island. Um, and so we we had our, all of our hotels closed and everything like that. And we didn't really know what was going to happen. And then once we were able to sort of get going and see how the season went, it ended up being um, really uh, busy for, for, um, for COVID times. There was a lot of people around. We're a small island. And you know, we're, we frankly were developed. You know, so long ago, we weren't. Block Island wasn't set up to be um, able to accommodate thousands and thousands of people at the same time. Yep. So in the summer, on a normal year, when a thousand people get off the ferry, they they fairly quickly disperse and get out to other parts of the island. Um, but this last summer, there there weren't as many taxis um, on the road because the drivers weren't driving because they were you know afraid of covid or whatever so there was just less ways to move people out of the center of town and it just got you know it got very congested um and and you know kudos to to our island community and to our small businesses who you know despite having Disney World size lines outside their coffee shops. We're still able to yeah. keep people six feet apart, and you know, neighbors helping neighbors and opening up their outdoor seating during the day if they only had nighttime and things like that. So, it's a real community out here that uh, comes together and really does our best to um, to be hospitable to our our main uh, our main industry. 
I can only imagine the line for ice caught the outside of Persephone's, you know, that's all- exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty busy on a normal quote unquote. Exactly. Normal. So yeah, enormous challenge. There's no doubt about it. And of course the ferry as well. And how do you manage that? Uh, obviously that's not under your direct auspices, but it's a factor. No question. Right. And there's, and of course there's, you know, there's more than one ferry. Yep. There's, you know, we have our airport, so we have regular commuter airlines, but people can come in on their own planes and people can in on their own boats as well. So that was another thing. There was supposed to be, you know, there was supposed to be no rafting in the harbor. Um, and you're familiar with Block Island, you know, in Old Harbor, that's what they, people do. They come in and they all raft their boats together. They have a party raft and they're, all, so that wasn't supposed to happen, but you can't, there was no way to stop it. Um, so, you know, we just had to do, it wasn't, you know, we're not getting the Coast Guard's not coming out here and turning us into a police state. Um, but we just try to do our best to, um, you know, like I said, mitigate and, and, and educate and, you know, let people know that this is, this is what we expect and, and uh, did the best we could. Yeah. And you had a good program with testing as well. That was sort of a model for municipal testing that the rest of the state by practice or practical reasons, you couldn't expect people necessarily to take the ferry but just to get tested but it kind of right. worked out yes and so we we still have that going on we have weekly testing we actually have bi-weekly testing still yeah. um, which has been great um, we are running into a big problem with vaccines mm-hmm. which is the same was the same problem with testing but they ended up bringing letting us test out here they they did bring out vaccines to to the older population and to the teachers um, but now Every, it, now it looks like we're going to have to go off when it's our turn. And it's a real, you know, it's hard enough to get a vaccination appointment, but now you have to add factor in boats, possibly staying overnight in a hotel because you can't get back this time of year. There's the boat schedule doesn't run that often. So, and we're about to be inundated with, you know, 20,000 people a day. So the, the residents out here are starting to get a little nervous, um, but we're, we're going to, you know, we're working with the Department of Health and um, it's on all of our radars and uh, hopefully, you know, we'll get everybody vaccinated and, uh, and prepared for the season. Well, what, what's in store for 2021? What can people expect? What can travelers expect uh, to see, to experience this coming season that we're about to hit? I mean, it's starting to get warm out pretty, pretty soon. It is. It is. Um, yeah, it's here. And it's interesting. It's Block Island seems to be um, usually it, it sort of eases in through April. You know, it starts to get a little busier and then you start seeing people on weekends and May and it really starts building until Memorial Day weekend when it, that's like kickoff of summer, you know, um, and then it, it's busy weekends until Fourth of July. And then it's like, bam, the place is full. But um, we're seeing it early this year. We're really seeing it. There's people here now on the weekends and um, it, it's it's gonna be an early season, I think. Um, people are just really, they're really ready. Um, they're feeling better about travel. And you know, the thing about Block Island, of course, is what are we known for? We're known for our open spaces. Um, we're known for our beaches, our nature trails, um, thing, things like that that are, are outdoor dining. You know, we're we're all set up for all those things that you're supposed to be looking for right now, which was the right. same thing as last summer. Um, so I, I want to say, you know, more of the same. We have lots of great outdoor dining. We have lots of great nature trails. All of our beaches are free and open to the public. Um, all, so all that good stuff, you know, you can really get out and and get out of that main downtown and see the island and really, you know, have your own space spread out. So there'll, there'll be more of, you know, more of that, more of the same. I, I'm sure we'll still have you know, we'll obviously be following all the state of Rhode Island restrictions and regulations, whatever those might be. Um, So, you know, there's a lot of signs around constantly reminding people, um, you know, to wear your mask or whatever, whatever it is. And I, you know, I think it's going to be a really good summer. I think there's going to be a lot of people around. I do think that Block Island is, has been getting ready for this. You know, our small businesses are prepared. Um, Whatever might come, we are ready to, um, you know, we're ready to to take care of those people in the safest way possible. You know, our hotels, our house rentals, kudos to the, the small businesses. These aren't, you know, big corporations. These are mom and pop businesses. These are these are our neighbors who and um and and we're all struggling to make it work. And and they're doing it, you know, bring their 10 bedroom in or whatever, um in in the safest way possible. Say so I do think it was it's it's I think it's going to be a good summer. Um, 
we're excited about it. And uh, we're a little, you know, we're a little nervous. We're a little nervous. Adventure awaits and hopefully yes. it all works it all out. Works. Um, yes. Thanks a lot, Jessica. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Can I, can I add one more thing? Oh, please. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The, the last, the, the sort of last thing I like to remind people, especially um, I, I'm assuming that a lot of the listeners are Rhode Island residents. Um, but, you know, the thing about Block Island is it's, you know, it's a vacation. It's a getaway. It's, um, you know, you really, we say close to home, but a world away. We want everybody to relax and have a good time, whatever that means to you. Um, but we we really need to remind people, especially this year, that this is for about a thousand of us. This is our home. It's our year-round home. You know, we have our kids go to school here. Um, so when we're asking people to, you know, stay off the dunes and keep your pets on your leashes and things like that, and just uh, in general, you know, we know that you've been cooped up for a year. We have too. But um, we're just really asking people this year to to remember that this is our home and, um, you know, we're trying to get to work. So maybe, you know, don't take selfies in the middle of the road and things like that. Yeah. So we're just trying to, you know, remind people this year really that um, that uh, we we can't wait to see you. We can't wait to entertain you. Um, we can't wait for you to come out and see our island. But we're just really asking people to to behave responsibly, especially this summer. Thanks for listening to this episode of We Are Hospitality from the Rhode Island Hospitality Association. For more information, visit rihospitality.org or search RI Hospitality on your preferred social media platform.